Thanks for listening to the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, where each week we talk about a free piece or two of technology that you can use your classroom. I'm your host, Shanna Martin. I'm a middle school teacher, technology, and instructional coach from my district. And I'm her producer and husband, Fuzz Martin, and I'm not a math teacher, but I do like to solve problems. Oh, that was pretty cute. <laughs> oh, thank you. A little back to school, school punning going on. Yes. I feel like I'm off my game. Season five. Season five. Here we are. We are here. And it's Who would have thunk? Start of the next school year. Yeah. So many things going on. Right. It's fun. It is fun. I'm excited. I'm excited I mean, for you. I've been working since September 8th. September. Scratch <laughs> that. Let's try again. I've been working since August 8th. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, yeah. Feels like I've been here for a month. Yeah, um, you've been doing mostly PD, right? Yeah. Yeah, workshops across the board for inquiry and for cool, fun things, and especially free tech tools. Yeah, and digital citizenship, and all kinds of fun things. So, did you have anybody take you up on your offer to uh, help them with their PD? Um, people in my own district, okay. but not outside of my district. Okay. So, I did make little certificates, though. If anyone needs a certificate. <laughs> Yeah, tech tools for teachers podcast at gmail.com. If you've been listening to the show for your professional development, uh, yeah. some schools do allow podcasts as PD hours. So, uh, and each of these about 15, 20 minutes long. I know. So get some time in. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of fun. I've done, I did the summer workshop and, or the summer podcast episode, which we had quite a few downloads on, which is always super fun that people jump in over the summer and catch up on things. I think. And shout out to Portugal. Yeah. A lot of listeners in Portugal, which know, is super great. fun. I love that. So fun. Yeah. And then I learned about other parts of the world too. So it's kind of. We could translate this into Portuguese. I'm just kidding. It's, there's a lot that goes into this behind the scenes. Don't just add another. Uh, <laughs> add another thing. <laughs> yeah. We do have a couple of tech tools coming up this season though, that we're going to talk about that like translate easily, which is kind of fun. So I will be sharing those in upcoming episodes. So. Great. And uh, to help improve accessibility, we've been putting transcripts in these shows now uh, yeah. using the, an app called Otter, which I believe we talked about before. We've talked about Otter before. So Yeah. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah. So they're not all, not the whole back catalog isn't trans, uh, transcribed yet, but. Working on it. I'm working on it. You so, know, just, you know, all your just free time. Just a couple time. episodes at a time because, <laughs> you know, it uh, takes, takes a lot of time to do that. Just a little But bit. the new episodes will have it. Awesome. Yay. Yay. So we're here for season five. And it is episode 125, yep. which is also always crazy to me. We did do virtual vacations. The last we episode ended, was at 123, and then we did virtual yeah, vacations. Yeah, because it was the end of July. season four. Yep. And then we did our virtual vacations, which was 124. Yep. Yep. And now we're at 125. Correct. Okay. Yep. I was like, we, I, we always do that like one mid summer yes. episode. And I was really excited because the end of last season was one, two, three episode, season. Four. Yes. So 123. That was my very sparkly end of season thing. Yeah. Yes. Well, All we're, right. we're way past that now. We're, we're so fast. We're looking to get to two, three, four of season five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So episode 125 of the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. We are discussing resources that should be hopefully really super helpful at the start of the school year. Yeah. We start officially on September 1st, always in our district. Mm -hmm. And as a teacher, I'm always like, oh my goodness, I have to do all of these things. And then also I teach social studies. So I talk about the events of 9-11 and that oftentimes with Labor Day in here is like the sixth day of school, like yeah. the way things fall. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it might be helpful to have some resources available for teachers, not just in social studies, but across content areas. If you're supporting 9-11 lessons, and so I have a collection of resources for that, along with other civics across content areas, because I read a really awesome PD book this summer and I presented on it and there's a lot of cool resources out there. So while I know our goal is always uh, one to two tech tools, <laughs> we have to be talking about four today. I'm sorry, but I couldn't. Well, I, I, dropped an, I dropped an extra one you on did. you right before you started recording. So. <laughs> and I was like, well, I have that as a resource in there, but yeah, we'll talk about it too. So moving forward. It will be only one or two unless I get really excited about something. <laughs> um, but we're going to have four websites today. Yeah. So hopefully very helpful. They're all to, very good. Yeah. They're awesome. And they're 
great for start of the year and some things that you need to cover. I know right off the bat when we get back to school. Mm -hmm. So um, we will be starting with uh, 9-11 resources here. Um, So we're going to start with the first one, which is a go-to that I use for some content is the 9-11 Memorial Museum. It's the website that they have created in New York City. Yep. 911memorial.org. Correct. And this site has so many things because it's also the site that they use for visitors when they come there Mm -hmm. um, and they visit and it goes through all of the different programs and, and things like that. And there's a collection of resources for teachers. I will point out that not everything is free on this site. So while we like to point out the cool free things, like their virtual tours, they ask you to pay for them because yeah. I know that they put a lot of work and things like that into them. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're so, very in-depth. They... Yeah, they're huge. Mm-hmm. But if you, I know budgets are always a thing. If you aren't able to do it that way, there are lots of other free resources. So if you go to 911memorial.org slash learn, or if you're on the homepage and you just click learn, you will see a drop down of all kinds of resources. So they have programs, you can do all kinds of things. Um, you will find, like, you start from the left and kind of work your way over. They have these really cool interactive timelines that I have found very helpful with students understanding the attack timeline. They have recovery at ground zero. So that's kind of neat because I like to show my students then once all of this happened, what happened starting September 12th. And then moving forward and it goes through. So a lot of times when I'm teaching September 11th and the events, we talk about them before, but then we also talk about what that led to afterwards with our country um, and things like that. So they have a really neat um, digital timeline that they have images of and you can click on it and zoom in on stuff, which is really neat. Um, That's super useful that I've used in my lessons before. Um, They have different histories. So they have, if you click on them, they have different audio interviews of different people, like if firefighters and people that were there and first responders and survivors and those types of things. So you can hear their audio interviews of what happened. They have specific lesson plans for students and teachers. Um, so if you click on lesson plans, you can go through and see there's an essential question, which I always appreciate the grade it's set up for the theme. And then the lesson plans that break it down from there. So symbolism and all different types of things, vocabulary is laid out. And even if you don't have time to go through a full lesson, I know, especially in elementary grades, like you are pressed for time those first few weeks of school, but just introducing your students to these events, you can break them down quite easily and just do maybe a half an hour lesson instead of spending a full day on it, depending on, you know, what your timeline is in your school as well. If you are a resident of the state of Wisconsin for another 9-11 resource is Wisconsin 911memorial.com. And under there, we happen to work a lot on this project together. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm, (laughs) I'm the president of the Wisconsin 9-11 Memorial. It's a really cool um, place. It's located in Kiwask, Wisconsin. We opened it in 2021. Part of the whole memorial, there was not just building a memorial, but also helping to educate students about September 11th, 2001 and the events that happened afterward. Correct. So you helped out by developing lesson plans that we have on the website, which are age appropriate, right? Correct. So what's neat about this is even if you are not able to bring your school, I mean, the the Field trips are free. There's, you know, program you just contact, send an email, and you can set up a, a field trip. I've been able to take my students locally. It's easy. We just throw them on a bus and add it as a part of one of our field trips. But if you're not able to get to Kewaskum for a field trip, you definitely have access to. So the lesson plans are set up by grade level. You can click on it. You can download the lessons. What's cool, I shouldn't say, like, I'm talking up the lesson plans that I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> they are standards based. Um, but any of the tools in the lesson plans, you can use as needed in your classroom. So there is timelines that have been created. There are maps that connect students from Wisconsin to New York, how far that is, what that looks like, because it's not always easy understanding in relation to our state where things are, how far this is away. Um, There's relation to Wisconsin to Afghanistan, like how far that is, what that looks like on a map. Mm -hmm. So there are different pieces to this that even if you are unable to do the whole lesson, there are reflection questions. There's other pieces to the lessons that you can use. 
There's also field trip planning. If you are able to do a field trip, there's a scavenger hunt that goes along with that on the field trip. Um, and then there's a huge collection of resources. So there's books, chapter books, picture books, um, the links to them. I believe they link to their Amazon accounts if you're able to order them. Um, there's also additional links. Like we just talked about the 9-11 Memorial Museum in New York City. That link is on there as well, along with other memorial resources, databases, World Trade Center memorials. Um, so all of their website links are on there as well. So if you're teaching about 9-11, if you need a one day lesson, a half an hour lesson, or to span over a few days, maybe since 9-11 this year happens on a Sunday, Sunday yep. you might do a Friday lesson, introducing and talking about it, and then the day after and what we've done, you know, so all of those resources are there. So between the um, the New York 911 memorialorg website, or if you're specific to Wisconsin or Midwest and you want to connect it to your students, Wisconsin 911 memorialcom And you so can, too, if you're, if you're not in Wisconsin, you can look at the lesson plans and alter them to be, to fit your state. So how Correct. far away is New York from yep. the city that you're in or the, the area that you're in? Um, and then a lot of this other um, lessons in those translate Yes, easily they are not specific to Wisconsin. So they talk about like symbolism within mm -hmm. your own community. They talk about, um, and as the lessons for older students, depending on your grade level. So if you're doing like nine, 12 lessons, that overview is going to be like about students will understand the impact of like counterterrorism within the United States, what's happened afterwards, how our country is rebuilt, like those types of things. So mm -hmm. it's not just specific to an area. So the lessons definitely lend themselves to uh, different states and other places yeah. that you can learn from as yep. well. So, yeah. So that's a little like nine 11 plug that always comes up so fast in the school year. And until I got involved in this project, I was always like, all right, I got to teach this day six of school. And I always take a pause and we spend a day on it in my classroom, mm -hmm. but it was also, okay, I kind of need shorter lessons because I'm in the middle of a unit, but also I want to make sure that it's acknowledged, even though it's like the sixth day of school always. So, yeah. Um, um, also on there, on the site, when you go to the Wisconsin nine 11 Memorial site, there are age appropriate books um, for different levels as well. So picture correct. books all the way up to word books. Yeah. So that's in that resource section Yeah, yeah, correct. that I had mentioned. Cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. So along with our doing like civics across the content areas, two other sites that are super helpful when it comes to, um, making students more aware of civics or just naturally teaching civics lessons in your classrooms, there is a site. It is called earthforce.org. So E-A-R-T-H-F-O-R-C-E.org. And what's cool about this is the goal is, it, you know, their like tagline is together, let's empower a generation of environmental citizens. But if you do any sort of inquiry learning in your classroom and just have students kind of dig in on different collections of information there are so many cool resources in this website for students and it's broken down by steps so if you just want to get your students more connected to the community and realizing like their first step is community environmental inventory so making students connect to or helping students I should say connect to what's going on in the world around them it's a project-based experience they kind of inventory methods of types of um if we're looking at floodwaters, if we're looking at just general like use of different environmental aspects or how things are set up within your community, water quality, waste, flooding risk, like these can connect civics lessons to science. It connects to them to like language arts and to math. And there's so many cool different resources. So what they all have on this website, just go to the homepage, click on like classroom resources. And then they have it step by step. So you can find specific issues if you're looking for laying something out for your students that you really want to cover within your classroom. And again, it goes like civics lessons. It talks about like the democratic voting process all the way through water quality. Like there's so many ways mm -hmm. of building these civics lessons and supporting your community in these lessons. Policy practice research, they have taking action, celebrating reflections. They have video resources. And then they also have professional development for teachers. So you can do that. Um, they have water quality monitoring resources, which I know our science teachers dig into quite a bit. 
You can register for PD with them. So there's just a bunch of different ways of connecting students to different um, civics lessons, but also through different topic areas, which is pretty cool and ways of connecting students closer to their community and just making them more aware of the, the world around them within mm-hmm. their area, which is pretty cool. And actually I found this website this summer, did a little PD reading on a plane. Um, <laughs> and the book I found this in, which it has a ton of different websites is called becoming active citizens. And so it's just all kinds of ways of tying citizenship into lessons, which is pretty cool. So that's where it's earth force is the website Mm -hmm. and you go earthforceresources.org would be if you're going to look specifically for classroom resources. Okay. And again, they have like their learning goals are partnerships, project management, you know, like how to assess students in this way too, and just click on them and they take you different ways of getting students to learn about their communities and connecting and how to make communities run more efficiently, which is pretty cool. Great. Yeah. So Earthforce is that site and it's very cool and our last one today because you know <laughs> we're laying out four sites that are going to help our students with civics across the content areas um the last one is called facing history.org so f-a-c-i-n-g-h-i-s-t-o-r-y.org facing history.org and this site awesome also found this reference in this book i read they have all kinds of great both teacher resources, webinars and self-paced PD and things like that. But what I appreciate is they had cool back to school support for teachers. And as we're coming into school, I know everyone's like, okay, we still have a little time, but we don't really because it's the first day of school. And depending on when you start, we're in it already, maybe a week or two. (laughs) So what's nice though, under education or resources, the cross top, they have all these choices. You can pick topics and you can dig in. But what I found is educator resources, you can pull up something that's really specific or just general topics of interest, books that are worth borrowing, connecting your current events to curriculum that you're teaching, on-demand learning. But if you click on topics when you're in that area, and it will give you specific topics from like democracy and civic engagement to bullying to the Holocaust. I mean, they really do cover everything in here. But if you click on current topics, then it talks about going back to school, like starting some journaling. What are you going to do to support your students in their back to school and making a connected community? So there's just a ton of educator resources available that are supportive and classroom materials. And you can choose if you want classroom specific materials versus events and training for you as an educator, which I appreciate. It's not always just Here's stuff for the kids, but also you can watch a webinar and learn some more information for you or how you address change or different things like that in your classroom. So facing history ourselves is the website.org. Um, and again, lots of back to school things, gathering communities, connecting students together, and then resources for both teachers and teachers themselves and teaching in your classroom. So there you have it. Yeah. Just a few things just to a couple look at, things. you know, along with all the professional development you're doing and getting your classroom ready <laughs> and just being fired up for the new school year. Woo. Woo. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Season five. Yeah. We're getting in. Starting off with a bang. Yeah. On that note, thanks for tuning in. This has been the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. If you ever have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at SmartNWY. And if you want to get more information on the links to the technology used and discussed in this episode, please visit smartnwi.com. If you'd like to support the show, please consider buying me a coffee or two. You can visit buymeacoffee.com slash smartnwi or visit smartnwi.com and click on the cute little purple coffee cup. Your donations help keep the show going. New episodes each week. Thanks for listening. Go educate and innovate. The ideas and opinions expressed on this podcast and the Smart NWI website are those of the author, Shanna Martin, and not of her employer. Prior to using any of the technologies discussed on this podcast, please consult with your employer regulations. This podcast offers no guarantee that these tools will work for you as described, but we sure hope they do. They do.